I would love to have you share with us what you think most everybody or even everybody should know about principles of strength training, principles of endurance training, and principles of, let's call it hypertrophy power and the other sort of categories of training. And this could be very top contour, but what do you think everybody on planet Earth should know about these categories of personal and athletic development? Well, that's a great first question. Holy cow. Uh, I think I'll start it this way. I tend to think about, um, there's about nine different adaptations you can get from exercise. Um, fat loss is not one of those. It is a byproduct, but that's not really what I'm getting at. Um, and so we can kind of categorize everything like that. And what we're going to, we can talk about are what are the concepts that you need to hit within each one. And then you could have infinite discussion of the different methodologies, right? And so that, that first thing to hit is the concepts are actually fairly few, but the methods are many, right? People have said that in iterations throughout time. Um, so if you walk from the very beginning, the first one to think about is what we'll just call skill. So this is improving anything from, say, a golf swing to a squatting technique to running. And this is just simply moving mechanically how you want your body to move. I'm just going to globally call that skill. From there, we're going to get into speed. So this is moving as fast as possible. The next one is power. And power is a function of speed, but it's also a function of the next one, which is strength. So if you actually multiply strength by speed, you get power. And the reason I'm making this distinction, by the way, is some of these are very close and I'm going in a specific order on purpose here. For example, power is, like I just said, it's a function of speed and strength. So if you improve speed, you've also likely improved power, but not necessarily, right? Because it could have come from the force direction either. So there's carryover. So like a lot of things that you would do for the development of strength and power, um, they are somewhat similar, but then there's differences, right? So things that you would do correctly for power would really not develop much strength and vice versa. So we can get into all these details later. Once you get past strength, then the next one kind of down the list is hypertrophy. This is muscle size, right? Growing muscle mass is one way to think about it. After hypertrophy, you get into these categories of the next one is, um, these are all globally endurance-based issues. And the very first one is called muscular endurance. So this is your ability to do how many push-ups can you do in one minute, you know, things like that. Past um, muscular endurance, you're now into more of an energetic or even cardiovascular fatigue. So you've left the local muscle and you're now into the entire physiological system and its ability to produce and sustain work. And we can get into a bunch of differentiations within endurance, but just to keep it really simple right now, the very first one, think about this as, um, I call this anaerobic power, right? So this is your ability to produce a lot of work for say 30 seconds to maybe one minute, kind of two minutes like that. The next one down then is more closely aligned to what we'll call your VO2 max. So this is your ability to kind of do the same thing, but more of a time domain of say three to 12 minutes. So this is going to be a maximum heart rate, but it's going to be well past just max heart rate. Then after that, we have what I call long duration endurance. So this is your ability to sustain work the time domain doesn't matter in terms of how fast go you're going. It's how, how long can you sustain work? This is 30 plus minutes of no break like that. So as just a high level overview, those are the, the different things you can target. Um, and again, some of those cross over and some are actually a little bit contrarian to the other ones. So pushing towards one is maybe going to sacrifice something else. So as, a, as an overall start, that's really what we're looking at. Within all of those though, they do have similar concepts in terms of there's a handful of things you have got to do to make all of those things work. And we could talk about as many of those as you want, but one of them is functionally called progressive overload. So wh whichever one you're trying to improve at, if you want to continue to improve, you have to have some method of overload. And as you well know, you've talked about a lot, adaptation physiologically happens as a byproduct of stress. So you have to push a system. So if you continue to do, say, the exact same workout over time, you better not expect much improvement. You can keep maintenance, but you're not going to be adding additional stress. So in general, you have to have some sort of progressive overload. And we can talk in detail about what that means for each category. But this could come from adding more weights. This could come from adding more repetitions. It could come from doing it more often in the week. It could come from adding complexity to the movement. So going from, say, a partial range of motion to a full range of motion or adding other variables. So there's a lot of different ways to progress, but you have to have some sort of movement forward. So if you have this kind of routine where you've built 
Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday or something, and you just do that infinitely, um, you're not going to get very far. So that's, I guess, the most high-level overview of all the things people can go after. 